In this video, I'd like to talk about the concept of rate conversion. So if you're given a rate and you need to change it to different units, the question is, how do you do that? And this particular skill is one of the most important skills that you can learn for a science class or in general for just solving real world problems. So this skill is useful in science classes. It's useful for solving word problems in math class, though, honestly, I use this skill all the time in real life. If you ever go to a different country, you might have to convert between units. So if you're in the United States, you're probably used to using the imperial system with feet and pounds and miles and stuff like that. But if you go to pretty much any other country in the world, you have to use the metric system. And so you need to know how to convert between maybe your speed on the road, miles per hour, to kilometers per hour. Or you need to be able to convert from the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to the temperature in degrees Celsius. There are all kinds of different applications in the real world where you'll actually use this information. So this is very practical mathematics. This is something that everybody should know how to do because you will use this at some point in your life. So let's just start jumping into some of these problems and I'll show you the general strategy for how I approach these. And we're going to go through a lot of different problems because there are so many different ways that you can look at these problems. And ultimately, you need to have a familiarity with the metric system. So we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. I'll show you a metric system chart um, once we get to those problems. So for this problem, a pitcher's arm rotates at a speed of 7 degrees per millisecond. So we have 7 degrees... So degrees up top and milliseconds down below. And we want to know what is the speed that the pitcher's arm rotates in degrees per second. So we don't want to use milliseconds anymore. And honestly, milliseconds is a very small amount of time. So seconds is just more common. So I think that's why we want to convert it to seconds, though there could be many reasons. So to be able to convert this to seconds, we first need to ask, well, how many milliseconds are there in one second? And what you'll learn with the metric system is that when you have the root word milli, this just means one thousandth. So if you have a millimeter, you have a one thousandth of a meter, or there are one thousand millimeters in one meter, just like there are one thousand milliseconds in one second. So this is our rate here. This is our equivalency that we need to use to convert our units. And so here's the strategy. Basically, you're going to set this up by multiplying fractions. And we're just going to take this first fraction that we start with, and we're just going to multiply by one repeatedly until we get the answers we want. And so what I mean by multiplying by one is that this equivalency here. If I rewrote it as 1000 milliseconds per second, these are equivalent. And if you take something and divide it by itself, or something that's equivalent to it, this always just equals one. So this fraction here is just equal to one, we can also flip it, we can have one second over a 1000 milliseconds. And we're going to multiply our rate here by one or by this equivalency. And since we're multiplying it by one, essentially, it doesn't change the value. If we multiply it by something other than one, we're going to be changing what we started with. But if you multiply it by one, since anything times one is itself, then it doesn't actually change anything. So the next step is to figure out, well, do I put milliseconds up top and seconds down below or vice versa? Do I put seconds up top and milliseconds down below? So I'm multiplying by this fraction, and I want to cancel out milliseconds because my end result, I want to get degrees per second. And so to cancel out milliseconds, I have to put milliseconds up top. So I have 1,000 of those for every one second. And units cancel out just like numbers. So if you have milliseconds divided by milliseconds, that's just one. They cancel each other out. So those cancel each other out. And now notice our units. We have degrees up top and we have seconds down below, which is what we want to end up with. And once you get your units right, once you make the appropriate cancellations, 
Then we just multiply fractions. We just go straight across. So you do 7 times 1,000, which is 7,000. So essentially, this pitcher rotates his arm 7,000 degrees in one second. Now, this original unit we were given, 7 degrees per millisecond, that's actually probably a better unit to use here. Because we know there are 360 degrees in a circle. So if he was rotating all the way around, in one second he would make several different rotations of his arm. And obviously he's stopping, you know, maybe he'll start way back here and then we'll throw it, you know, maybe here. So it might only be going 100, 150 degrees. So this is a little bit of overkill, but these are equivalent to each other. So probably this is the more realistic measure because let's say it was 140 degrees, then that would take 20 milliseconds to actually rotate that. So this all happens pretty quickly. But the general strategy that we used, we can apply to every problem. Start with your given unit, figure out what you want to convert it to. In this case, we had to convert milliseconds to seconds. So we need to figure out that ratio, that equivalency, and then multiply by that fraction. And we have to decide what unit to put up top so that to cancel out the milliseconds down below. And then once your units are canceled out, then you just multiply fractions. So let's use this strategy on several more problems now.